I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man, this sucks. I had a buddy ask me uh, to do a story on the show to like for us to help him. Oh. Yeah. So he works in an office. Uh-huh. And uh, he's in an open floor plan. Oh, dude. So now that's kind of the new thing, right? The open floor plan. Well, I think they're on their way out now. They were big like 10 years ago. That was no, like no, the way. There's like a whole, like Goldman Sachs, all like the oh, huge Oh, those guys firms. are doing it now? It's about, they make it look really nice. Right. It looks fantastic. And they got dividers. And it's they got rooms and different places where you can congregate. I mean, it's designed for, they say, more engagement with each other kind of shit. Yeah. But in reality, it's like space saving and yeah, yeah. less it's, money. It's a money. Less yeah. overhead, it's, it's, it's easier it's, to clean. I mean, totally. all around, it probably saves them quite a bit of money. Yeah. Uh, but you got to sit close to people. And in his job, some people have a permanent little desk because their jobs oh. dictate they should have a permanent desk. And other and people others, float. Yeah, got to float. Yeah, Gina does that. Gina floats. Uh, some her people new, aren't in the office Because they got right? a new place now. Yeah, 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 yeah right. So you don't got to book your desk or anything, but you just take it if it's open. So sometimes if you sit at a permanent desk, you really don't have a choice on who sits next to you. And some of these people are taking call after call after call so if they're next to you and they're loud taking the call, oh, man. it's your whole day. It's your whole day. Someone's See, like, I never understood that. I never understood what the, I mean, so much, especially now with the Zoom mm -hmm. meetings and all that shit is everybody's like talking and having these meetings at their desk. Mm -hmm. If you don't have like a little divider there, I, oh, the person next to you, what the fuck do you do? I mean, this all just boils down to the reality that do I think it's better to go into the office sometimes? Sure. I do think there's benefits to that. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, it's about keeping people spending money in the environment and making sure the other businesses thrive. Oh, you mean like in Midtown? Like e in yeah, general. Yeah. Because like there, there's not as many restaurants now mm -hmm. in Midtown. Like the, a lot of those lunch Midtown, places are gone. downtown, all that stuff. They yeah, wanna, yeah. You know, the only time any of those businesses keep money going is when all of those offices are filled with people. Yeah. So... I'm sure this is why they're like, you need to go back to the office, right? 100%. Yeah. So anyways, I, he's sitting next to this guy. This guy sits next to him who is not. And, and sometimes in those places, because most people are coming in the same days, you end up kind of sitting next to the same people all the time. Because they're like, oh, I'll sit here because I grouped together with my team here or something. You know, there's always a reason. Did you ever take like a Metro North or something like that? There's there's like, yeah. uh, like customary kind of things like... You do that dude sits there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, old, like remember in like the seventies and eighties, guys yeah. like always coming into like Wall Street. They always had oh, that's where I sit. Yeah, and Jim from wherever sits here. Right. Like it, it's everyone knows. Yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. So that's kind of how it is there. Yeah, but I guess there was a seat open, and this dude, you know, it was extra busy that day or something. And there was probably some event, so there was more people than normal on the floor. And this dude sat next to him, about he said like sixty years old. I mean. Like kind of slovenly, built kind of like Bam Magera's dad. Ooh, wow! Not uh -huh. as fat, but like that kind of yeah. wide, almost like I played football when I was in my twenties. Mm -hmm. But now I'm this like yeah, but I didn't drinks, stop eating. Yeah, six <laughs> cups of coffee. Uh, yeah. Probably has to like you know that joke Lucy CK has about his daughters going to the bathroom in the airport, and they're uh, he's trying to get his daughter to go in the stall, and next to him is some guy with his <laughs> foot cocked. It was like he was. Sh Shitting pennies. <laughs> That's probably like every shit for this guy trying to get leverage with his foot cock and shaking. He talks about shaking, you know that? <laughs> it's like he was shitting pennies into a rusty bucket. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's like the foot cock is hilarious. <laughs> Oh my God! So you know that guy is that kind of guy, right? Yeah, and yeah. And I yeah. guess he's one of those guys who's not aware of his surroundings, and he's loud. Yeah, he's not trying to be loud. That's kind of how I am. And he's having conversations. Oh my God! He's probably like the wider, you know, fifteen year older version of you. This guy, because yeah. he's but he's not. You're not bald. But he's like bald, but looks like a gorilla. But he's just like a bull in a china shop yes, kind of. Like, yeah, and, and the conversations he has, he's coming off aggressive. 
but he's not being aggressive. Yeah. Like, no, oh, yeah. Come on, come on. You can't see who he's talking to. Yeah. But it's like the guy's in his fucking living room. Yeah. Come on, come on. You know, now, well, let's wait a minute. Let's back it up. But you're just telling <laughs> Dude, me this guy's like. totally how I talk. <laughs> Dude, I talk so loud on the phone, too. I'm like. Okay, okay. Let's back it up, though. Let's back it up. <laughs> yeah, listen, listen. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> you. And there's like all these little squeamish women working around. He's like this gorilla with a headset. <laughs> And all these normal people. He's just screaming at guys on the phone. Dude. So he said that this dude cleared his throat oh. all day, just 20 times an hour at least. mayonnaise. Just whatever it was. Fucking. And he's clearing it. Oh, uh, he wanted to kill this guy. Dude, that's that. And he's like, how would I even address this giant man? See, that is totally across the line. I... I I get up and excuse myself. If I got to like clear my throat like that and I know it's going to sound fucking like He was telling me it sounded wet. like this. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> and it would go like <clears throat> Dude, you right? go to the bathroom yeah, for that. Yeah, get get this get handled. Up. Get this handled. You don't do that in front of people. No. You don't, I don't even do that on a sidewalk. If I'm walking on this fucking sidewalk and someone's near me, I wait till they pass. Because it's, it's respectful. Yeah. I mean, it's... And he's like, what do I do? What do uh, I do? Dude. Oh, handkerchief. I had a late... I work with What'd you go? What'd you say? What'd well, you, I, I told him you talk about it on the show. Handkerchief. I didn't, I didn't I give him a... a uh, like well, a, that's, that's the a thing. Gift. That's all you could do is you gift him either a lozenge. <laughs> just... He's he like, get, uh, 500 he gets, Ricolas. I just... He gets hey, a, it's your birthday. A, I make it rain on his fucking dome. A tote bag full of like, uh, what are you going to give him? <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to give him one of those <laughs> swag totes filled with r r Ricolas. Here you go. It's just got a CPAP machine in it. <laughs> CPAP. If you look, there's some good, there's some goodies. CPAP, there's a Breathe Right script. <laughs> you fuckhead. <laughs> couple Little bananas. Nasal spray. <laughs> couple bananas for your girl ass. <laughs> Yeah, I got a nice little goodie bag for you. Hey, what's your insurance number? <laughs> hey, you on the Blue Cross Blue Shield? Yeah, you're on the same, we're, we're the same plan, right? Yeah. I got the so, fucking <laughs> in-house nurse. <laughs> Dude, I work with this Irish lady from Brooklyn. Like, first generation American, of course. But, like, her family, an older lady. Mm -hmm. She's a hard ass. Like, uh -huh. oh, man. And one time, she had a fucking... Like a flask at her desk, uh -huh. but she was profesh, right? Everyone had left, and it was just me. And she looked at me, and she was like, I'm "Sorry, I'm drinking this Jameson in her flask." And she's telling me this story about how earlier in the day, some lady was doing <laughs> like just sniffing. Oh yeah. And she said, "I grabbed a, I grabbed a, t a tissue box, and I said." Here, here, here! <laughs> You're fucking insane. <laughs> she should be on the next Josh Bat shit fucking segment. She, she lives alone. Yeah, she's like one of those people, seventy years old, yeah, never yeah. had a husband. Right. Yeah, yeah. Just Irish. Well, one of those things is like once you let that in. That's like once you allow it to bother you, yes. right? You can't unhear it. <laughs> you can't unhear. And you, can't you know, she's one of those people. Yeah. You know, so rigid, yeah. so meticulous. Yep. She's like scared of her shadow, but it's also like I would be scared to fight her kind right. of woman. Yeah, she's she scared would, of her shadow, she but could, she would kill you. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's got that like. Probably had a, her dad was this like Irish hard ass with four girls. That so you know, cornered shit out of him. That cornered fear, like uh, you know, strength. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah right. Oh yeah. yeah. And she's probably been in fist fights as a girl growing oh, up. Yeah. I mean, she lived that life. I mean, she's from deep Brooklyn. She's sleeping a flask yeah, at, she, at the office. Yeah. And no one would know it. That's she great. probably has worked 20 years half yeah. drunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And yeah. I was the only one. She only felt, that's how much of a dirtbag so I am. Isn't she, it great when I you get- I was the only person she ever felt comfortable with showing the flask to. It's so great. <laughs> I love I love when you realize that you you are that obvious. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I oh, I was handling it well. <laughs> <laughs> the seventy year old lady is dying to get drunk with me. It's like when the homeless guy is like begging for change and he looks at you like, "Hey, what's up, man?" <laughs> suit. He, just, he just says, "Hey, what's up? How you doing, man?" <laughs> Dirty suit. <laughs> Like he's looking at you like we're the same. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just that's how I like, I'm wearing a dirty suit. I walk through life like I'm wearing a dirty suit. 
<laughs> but yeah, dude. Oh, that's fucking. You got. I don't know. I, I guess the advice I would give this guy is I think he has to just move desks. <laughs> At the end of the day, yeah. That's what's going to have to happen. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the thing. So he needs to conspire with somebody else. To sit in that desk. To sit in that desk. Yes. That's the better move. That's Good what advice. you need to do. You Find need to, somebody you that need to get a crew. Because, or put a reserve sign on. Because that's what those guys on the, um, on the, on the train, they do. Yeah. They're like, hey, you're going to sit with us. Yes. And then, like, it's official. Like, we're, no, you're going to sit I, here now. I'm telling him also, if he can't find someone to do that, put the reserve sign and put the name... Blah blah and put VP or yeah, how about this? So he's a big boy. He's big. Why don't you uh, <laughs> put a smaller chair there? <laughs> or or fuck with the wheels on one of the chair, <laughs> right? Or like you get in there early. Yeah, you you kinda, pr- he works in a pristine place. You kind of no... you kind of saw the desk a little bit. So when he leans on it, it cracks. Like dude, you yeah, can't fucking false bottom. <laughs> I'm going to false bottom this guy's he desk. He down. just bashes his face into the front of the it's desk. It's like an Eric Andre thing. <laughs> he sits down, everything collapses. Look how elaborate our shit's getting now. Trash like, hey, just man, falls on. You got a half saw or, you know, any uh, kind yeah, of sanding. You got in the maintenance department. <laughs> you get me in Saturday, let's sneak into your office Saturday. Give me a security badge. <laughs> You just hey just keep put an, the reserve sign on there. Keep the an eye out for name. like a broken chair. Go into the like the service area. Go into the service area and pull a broken chair out. Hey, you guys using this? What's going on with this? Make, first, infiltrate maintenance. Yeah. Make friends make, with the porters. Make friends with them. Yeah. Six months tops. Yeah. Do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> it's like jail. I mean, you should be making friends with porters at every place oh, that man, you're at. I love a porter. Always. Always. They're the best. You know best. what though? It's it's also de- it depends on the building. Like sometimes the porters do well enough that they actually are responsible people. And certain buildings that sure. are like high end and sure. they're over, like they have that company oversees them. Oh, where yeah, it's like, yeah, this yeah. is a career yeah, yeah, porter yeah. job. But my point but most is, of the time, but my point is, regardless, make friends with them. Oh, yeah, of course. Yes. Always. Always be cool with the fucking the porters, porters. know where everything if, is. If, you, if it looks like the dude, like I have this at my building, the, uh, what happened? The elevator was down. So when you go to the basement to use the laundry, there's only one elevator down. And there's the only way to get back up is through that elevator or go outside. Yeah. And walk, you know. And sometimes I'm in, like, flip-flops and, like, shorts mm-hmm. in the winter. Mm-hmm. So uh, elevator was down, and the guy, the porter's there, and he apologized. Yeah, it's all fucked up. I don't have the key to the door. There is a stairwell, but you need a key for it. And I was just like, he goes, yeah, we can get somebody over here in, in a minute. I go, dude, I'll just walk outside. And him and the other porter were like, that's why he's the best. And I was like, when they were like, that's why he's the, well, he's one of the guys good, out too. Yeah, but he goes, he's one of, that's why he's one of the good ones. And I was walking away and I was like, I oh, am. Yeah. <laughs> that's like the working class hole. I fucking da, 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 da. Like Rudy at the end of Rudy. I was like, <laughs> respected by the people I need respect from. The my, porters. My peers. <laughs> I, the reason why I brought up that you. It depends on the building. It's because some of these porters, even if they are really good at their job, they have downtime mm-hmm. and they could dick around with you. Oh. And I used to, when I was younger, when I had more time in my hands, there would be porters I would just hang with oh, while right they're on. working. Oh, cool. They'd be like, hey, look what we found. Oh. Or look what we got up here. Like, yeah, come yeah, up yeah. to the roof where yeah. you can't go because I'm going to show you. Like, it would be That's cool. access to everything. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It, <laughs> when I was in high school, because I was such a fucking lazy, I was dyslexic, so I just like really mailed it in in school it was like oh, just about sports and because i was an athlete i got a seventh period they called it like a work hour Stu- work study period uh, stu- yeah work what, period. Uh, what was it called yeah we had that yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. i was assisting the janitor and he wouldn't want me to do anything with him uh-huh and i would just like hang with the janitor Dude, and i go never got to, an I assistant would, I would, when i was a janitor in I my high school dick around <laughs> But then we after, never had assistants. What fucking but then after San the season, Diego? Your janitors are getting assistants. <laughs> but I wasn't doing shit, and I really thought it was it's a fuck around San period. San Diego I thought janitors, because like, I'm the quarterback of the football team. I'm out here fucking around. And then after the season, the guy was like, "Hey, take this stick and pick up all that fucking milk." <laughs> after lunch. I'm just walking around. And then I realized, oh shit, I'm like supposed to be a janitor. So I'm kind of like you, but I didn't do that anymore. But you didn't that. get paid. No, I didn't get paid. You, so, so you're, you're better than me. So you, <laughs> I had a work release program. You had a work release. Yeah, you know what? Instead of teaching you things, we're just going to have you work. 
<laughs> Picking up trash is for you. <laughs> You're better it was off. a fall from grace. Well, let me tell you this. You're better. Algebra is for some people. I mean, I was not doing well in school either. They should have really been making me go to a class, but no. they were like, nah, here. No, they take were. the sh- stick with the claws on it. This will serve you better. <laughs> I don't wash the stick, this, wash the bucket I put that, all the shit in. Look how clean your apartment is. <laughs> yeah, I'm a better man for it. Thanks, Oscar. That was his name. Oscar the Grouch. He's Oscar the janitor. Just fucking living in trash cans, cleaning trash cans. Dude, we had a janitor uh, at my high school, and he was uh, my superior. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> authority figure, mentor. <laughs> hey, his name was Ray Ray. <laughs> Ray Ray, my mentor said. <laughs> Ray Ray. But he had a huge, it looked like somebody. Dotted him. Punched him in the forehead because there was like, it must have been an inch Deep with the ring of a of no, like but a full square and uh, everybody would go Ray yeah crazy right like and then, someone hit him with dice dude like and he was a hard ass motherfucker yeah, but yeah. like a wiry guy yeah. you know what I mean probably, like probably every, talks a lot of shit and everybody would be like Ray Ray and then somebody goes from I was a freshman at the time and somebody goes uh, it's before I was actually a janitor so and I'm, <laughs> just I'm, you I'm, were aspiring yeah, janitor. aspiring <laughs> <laughs> just I would look up the Ray Ray. <laughs> <laughs> But somebody was like actually talking to him. They go, so Ray Ray, what happened to your head? And he goes, ah, fucking tumor. <laughs> <laughs> and just goes back to mopping. <laughs> His whole skull in the front was removed dude, from a tumor? Dude, it was like crazy, dude. See, this is why I can't stand uh, people. Because I, I'm kind of grown. I'm a, I bitch a lot. But I'm grown from like that kind of attitude where it's like, fuck tumor. Like that's my kind of family. Like just very nonchalant. Mm-hmm. Like loses their mind over petty things, but can just gloss over a life threatening <laughs> situation and they just move on with it. They don't need to have a parade or people to know about it. Like how many people do we know in their 20s and 30s in this world of woke and even the fucking far right idiots? That would love to tell you a sob story about their tumor hole in their head. Oh, 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 oh! That's where you're going with it. I yeah. was following. It. I was like, "Why are you mad at Ray Ray?" I'm not. I love Ray Ray. Uh, Ray Ray, love. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah, Ray yeah. Ray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he didn't bring it up. <laughs> well, to be fair, he's dealing with fucking high school kids. <laughs> it was a wise ass sixteen year old that asked him what happened to your hey, forehead. <laughs> pull holes in this for me, Ed. <laughs> This guy is worth us. This is what we should be striving to. He's a Ray Ray level. 65 year old man mopping up who's having 16 year olds go, Ray Ray. Hey, Ray so Ray. What, he's a pillar of the community. We're talking about him now. He made an, I love hey, he I made, love, he I made love, an impression on old young Ed McGowan. I love him, dude. Love Ray Ray. But let's not confuse it. He's, his response is to shut the fuck up. That's what his response is. Fucking tumor. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. You know what I'm saying, though? Some of you are just f- fucking assholes. Be more or be a Ray Ray. It's the name of the episode right be there. A Ray be Ray. a Ray Ray. <laughs> I wonder if there's pictures of him somewhere. There has to be. He's got to be in the yearbook. He, I bet that guy's still alive. Those are the kind of dudes that live no. to be like 90. I mean, that was 30 years ago, right? Yeah. 95. Maybe. 90, 95 years old. Yeah. And you know what it is, too? I bet you, because I, I had a small tumor in my forehead. Damn, you and Ray Ray. Me and Ray Ray. Injured spirits. It's like in uh, Queen's Gambit. <laughs> <laughs> Except you're going to the janitor to not learn chess, but to learn how to mop. <laughs> I also. You just lift up your hair, your shaggy. Ray just, Ray. Yeah, it's you just to, go, Ray Ray. It's the 90s, so I had like a swoop. So I just part my swoop over a little bit. I go, Ray Ray. I'm like you. <laughs> you remember the and swoop? He, and he just hands you a mop with a straight face. <laughs> I always knew it was you, boy. But I bet, yeah, I bet you. Are you confusing it now with Rudy? Are you? It just went from King, Queen's Gambit to no, Rudy. No, Queen's Gambit. That's the storyline. Oh, that's you've never line? seen it. No. Oh, it's awesome. It's a, were... the, the janitor in this girls' school, like an orphanage. Uh huh. He's unbelievable at chess, and the girl who gets brought there, who is the Queen's Gambit, uh-huh. that's a move anyways, but it's yeah, the it's main girl. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. She sees this, and she's a genius, so she 
starts playing in her head, and uh, he ends up teaching her and making uh, her great. Uh, yeah, that's uh, cool. I ruined it for everybody, but fuck yeah, it. It's, it's been right. out for like five years. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, I honestly, but, but you don't. It doesn't sound like you ruined it. Um, the, great show. Yeah, <clears throat> the um, but this is what I'm getting at. So I think what it was is basal cell basal cell skin cancer because that's what I had from that time you got sunburnt. Uh, from all the sunburns, uh, but it's that a hard. Was it the Atlantic City sunburn, <laughs> probably that Atlantic City sunburn was. <laughs> I fucking feel like that's the one that did. Epic. Did I tell that story on here? I told that on here. Yeah. <laughs> Me and the fucking dishwasher <laughs> falling asleep in the sun, <laughs> just high. blistered, just waking up blistered. <laughs> we went into a casino and they were like, "You got you. You need some ointment." Just the, the security guard, like, <laughs> as you're walking in, he's like, "Hey, fellas, 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 I look fellas, boys. can I?" Look, you order, please. <laughs> <laughs> Can you some, go get some cream or something? <laughs> That's how fucked up you guys look. You were off putting to people in Atlantic City. They let anybody in those casinos, especially back then. <laughs> yeah. a shithole, dude. Oh my god, a homeless guys playing slots. Caesar's like, and we're walking into Caesar's palace. They're like, look, boys, gentlemen. You have upset Caesar. <laughs> <laughs> you must leave. You've upset Caesar. <laughs> Little did they know, little Eddie had a fucking cancer in his forehead. Yeah, <laughs> you know it stopped my gambling he addiction. Fucking melanoma, right? Eddie. They called like, him. He could have been a great gambler, this kid. <laughs> it's the tipping point. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, uh, oh, dude, listen to this. I I thought of this today coming over here, uh, today before you got here. I. I remember this fucking guy years ago. I worked in this office and this dude was like a young dude and he, you could tell like he so badly wanted to be cool in his, like probably in his adolescence, like okay. high school and college. Uh -huh. He wasn't. How old is and, he now? Well, I don't know him now. This is oh. years ago. Oh, so, oh, oh, but it's oh, a story sorry. I thought of oh, that okay. I wanted to tell you about. Oh, okay, cool, cool. And then he got moved up pretty fast. So in his job, he became like a higher up of some people and you could tell like he's living out his fucking, oh. I'm the man, uh -huh. I'm the, like I'm the big man on campus. Okay. And I remember I was new to this company, but I knew kind of his background and I was sitting next to someone that was on his team and this guy was like this old dude, like old, we're talking Old in old in mind and yeah. old in body. Yeah, Just yeah. an old dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's like thirty eight, but he's he, old. He was old. The guy yeah, I'm sitting next old. to. You no, he was in his fifties. Oh, okay. but he was old. Yeah, definitely like. Mortgage probably has to pay for a daughter's wedding soon, kind of guy. But like, just you know, just considered himself, but old. a low, like not high enough either at that age. Like yeah. he he was higher than me, but mm -hmm. definitely was low for his age. Right, right. Yeah, and yeah, now yeah. this dude young is overseeing him. Oh, okay. and the dude who's overseeing him had a buddy within the company he had hired as his kind of like other direct report kind of guy. Mm -hmm. And I, it was about three o'clock one afternoon, and they come cruising over, and it's when they had the tall cubicles. But mm -hmm. you could still kind of see over yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. So I could see him. And he looks over to this old guy's cubicle. And he's in there. He's like the stapler guy from Office Space. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't look up from his computer. It's yeah. like he comes in at the same time. He leaves at the same time. Like, he is that dude. Mm -hmm. This guy, this young guy looks over the cube. He's like, hey, Jim, drinks tonight. All of us. <laughs> like an impromptu drink. <laughs> and this guy's face, this old dude's face, he was like this. Because he, he didn't know what to say. It's his superior saying... We're all going out to drinks tonight, almost like you gotta go. Right. And the guy's like, ah, uh, ah, uh, I can't. I gotta take my, I gotta take my wife. I gotta take my wife out tonight. <laughs> He's like made up a whole thing about his oh, wife. Oh wow, he froze up he on it. He froze huh? up, and the young guy's like, oh, you gotta take your wife out. And he's like, yeah. Uh, was there a, was there an email about this? Like he was, because uh, I would love to go to the next one. Like he was trying to save face and in that moment it didn't do you hit think me. that the superior that what the dude was fucking with them no I, I thought it was a bit yeah because i'm like how would you think this guy right would be available for an impromptu drinks night with you and your right it was like he was talking to a fraternity brother like come on bud you and i we're gonna do shots tonight like the way he yeah. misread this guy's aura it was i thought oh this guy's doing a bit but he wasn't he was seriously thinking he was going to have a ah, bonding poor, moment. I feel bad for this guy. Right? And I now, feel bad for this old but guy. But I feel bad for the. I thought it was funny because I was in my late 20s. Because I was like, oh, this dude does, oh, doesn't want to go to drinks. I'm not saying it's not funny, but I still but feel bad for him. now as a 40, this is why it came up. Because mm -hmm. now as a 43-year-old mm -hmm. with a kid, 
I feel bad for him because you're like, he just wants to get by and he knows he has to show up to some of these events. But this is why I feel bad for him as opposed to like, he didn't know how to respond. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if somebody said that to me or you, you're like, ah, oh, you're so good at saying no. I would be. You'd be you would have said no I'm before s- you finished. I'm so good at saying no. <laughs> you're I the can, best at saying no. I, I can say no, and you and makes you feel like we already hung. <laughs> 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 we already did the thing that you wanted to do. <laughs> we just did it right now. There it is. <laughs> it just happened. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I more feel it from because you don't you don't work in a lot of offices anymore, and back then especially the politics of yeah. the office. I could see that going against this guy in his year end contract. That sucks. Not because that like, poor fucking and maybe it, hump. Maybe it didn't, but those kind of dudes. No, but and they that's worry. why he. But that's what I'm saying. He's gonna worry. He worries he's that it is already. It doesn't even matter whether or not it affects him or not. It's affecting him because yes. he's fucking worried he's about worried. it. What he if should. it affects and me? And that's the problem. Yeah. You know what? Maybe you're not. And then I thought about it this way too. I'm thinking, well, maybe if he said yes more in his 20s and 30s to these drinks. He's in a position where he doesn't have to be right. a fucking subordinate no, no. to a younger guy. He made his he path. He made his bed. He made yeah. his bed. Yeah. For sure. For sure. I don't feel bad about that part. I feel bad in that moment that I wish he knew how to handle himself yeah. at that. Yeah. You know, when somebody asks him for drinks and you don't want to go or you can or whatever. It's funny how you can kind of break one moment down that you've seen someone do and yeah. go, this has been your life this, problem. Yeah, yeah, totally. Isn't that, because that's yeah. exactly, now that I'm like talking it out yeah, with you, yeah, yeah. it's a fuck it, that's his whole life. Yeah. He just, it's like defending your life with Albert Brooks. That's the clip they play. <laughs> yeah, right. That's the yeah, clip yeah, they yeah, play. Yeah, yeah. You not being able to, one, stand up for yourself, and two, you not being able to engage. Right. So you can move up the ladder and get what you want. Because even here's the, because there's multiple ways to handle that. Oh, you go, tons. You say yes, and then you do like a oh, say I say yes. Oh, but my wife got the fu- shit. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta from go. The fuck it, go. I'll be back. What time are you guys hanging out? <laughs> your wife always shit your pants. <laughs> got an IBS. I don't know, man. I gotta bring her extra pair of panties. I carry a bunch in my bag. <laughs> You're just it like so much. Ah, I just got a text. We're out of toilet paper. I gotta go. <laughs> a lot of people sitting in my house right now. I got about seven, eight immigrants living with me. But that's the- <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot. It's a busy. Yeah, I took a lot of people busy. in during this uh, election year. You know. <laughs> It fucking mayor. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> Derek Adams, man. I got immigrants living in my house left and right. But I'll catch you on the next drinks. I want to know about yeah, these. Come no, on. How late you guys hanging out? You guys going to be out late? <laughs> how late? <laughs> I'll cruise back. I'll get the toilet paper. Once I, what, I, 1, 2 a.m. I should be able to get back. I'll put the immigrants to bed. <laughs> I'm <laughs> tucking all my boys in Venezuela. <laughs> tuck them in. I'll be out. You guys hanging late? <laughs> <laughs> Tuck my immigrants in. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking guy. Oh, shit. Life is a, what a slog. I mean, what a funny slog. I mean, what a slog. It's the jobs. That's what makes it. It is the work. It's the jobs, dude. It's the work. Isn't that a really, and now people are like, why doesn't anybody want to work? Because the pandemic revealed. Yeah. The the structure is so brutal. Yeah. And we just accepted it for so long. This anxiety and stress oh, and all that shit, man. Not on me. Yeah. Holy shit. It's too shit. much, man. It's not good for you. It's really it's not what healthy. makes people miserable is the work. It's the jobs. It's the shit fucking jobs. Yeah. I would have loved to have a bird's eye view. And I kind of did through the men in my life because my parents had me young so I was around an era of men that were from like, like your age. Uh huh. Like technically, I'm around most of the men I grew up around were guys you. Oh, eight, because yeah, yeah, yeah. you're about ten years older than me. Oh, eight. Eight. Yeah, eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, my parents had me at eighteen. They didn't mm-hmm. wait till they were thirty. Mm-hmm. So I'm around a lot of older generation people, like mm-hmm. boomers. Mm-hmm. And to see those dudes go into bars after their job, and just that was their only joy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah not right, going right, right. home. Yeah, yeah, not seeing their family because all you see is like the money you're not making, or you know, and that's on them. I'm not. I'm not saying like that's. I'm saying that they're they did it right. But right, yeah, yeah, yeah. the fact that like their job annihilated them. I mean, there, here's the thing though. There's 
Though you're talking about like laborers, right? Laborers, but also people that are pencil pushers. I think there's a different kind of uh, like the physicality, the toll it takes on your physical body and your and your mental versus the mental anxiety. Like you're talking about this hump. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll, yeah, we'll, yeah. Pen we'll he's a pencil him, pusher. Yeah, we'll yeah, call yeah. Him Gerald, well, yeah, yeah. Geraldo, well, well, Gerard. <laughs> I'll call him Gerard. <laughs> Yeah, Gerard the Hump. Fucking Gerard. Yeah. 55 years old. What would you rather have, though? Like, so here's the, here's the, either or. Uh, Gerard's like fucking Agita, uh -huh. right? That's following him throughout life because of this fucking job. Mm -hmm. Or like, you got like a limp. Because you've been working on fucking construction so for the choice 40 years. Is you your got ego and your masculinity is limping. Or you actually have a limp. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, yeah. That's a hard one. It is. Because I am, you know, a very knock around dude, and not having a masculinity does not seem right to me. Right. It doesn't seem like I would want that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like I wouldn't begrudge a woman for saying I love my femininity. Mm -hmm. I want to lean into it. Sure. That's why I love, like, Working class women because they like showing. They're like, yeah, look oh, at them. That's oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, I'll yeah. spit in your fucking face too. Like they, <laughs> those are the true feminists. Like, you ever seen a chick like a hot working class chick and dealing with the knuckleheads in the neighborhood? Like they know how to do annihilate. You, do you see? It makes me think of that. Uh, that Kelsey video. Do you see that? Oh, that's exactly what His I'm talking wife? about. His wife His went wife? off on that lady. Yeah, yeah she's from Ooh, Delco. Yeah, yeah, she ain't yeah, fucking around, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's Philly all the way. It's I bet you great. got a boner looking oh, at that. It's so fucking hot. <laughs> that's what I mean. Like those are the kind of women yeah. I've always been attracted to. It's like, you don't fucking start with her, boy. <laughs> you don't, don't do that. <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't do that. But uh, but so you would take the limp? I would take the limp. Yeah. Because at least I think the I limp, would too. Because it, it does the limp, I would have more fight in me than than I would if I was Gerard. Right. Yeah. yeah At least yeah. with the limp, I have some fight. Well, you, you you're still you. Yeah. Like the uh, you just you know I'm a little handicapped. Yeah. I can't lift things. You know what I mean? Like you can't like it's bad. Like you can't really carry things up. Yeah. Sometimes like I, uh, somebody you have to get somebody yeah. to help you to like yeah, yeah, yeah. carry things, which is emasculating. And you know what? Maybe it made me a better man. Because I had to learn how to ask for help. Hey, look at you. Somebody's been going to therapy. All day, baby. Somebody's been going to therapy. Oh, man. <laughs> you could follow me at Josh Accardo and go to joshacardo.com for all tour dates. The working class holes actually will be in cities near you. Uh, starting this June, we are at Wallingford, Connecticut. Oh, yeah. uh, after Wallingford, we have Seattle. Oh, yeah. uh, and then after Seattle, we will be in Hartford, Connecticut. And then we will be in Rhode Island. So stay tuned because there are a lot more dates coming. Edward? Yeah, follow me on uh, Instagram at Edmund Comedy. Uh, go to EdmundGowan.com to see my uh, city dates and all the dates that uh, Josh just talked about. Email us. Yes. Email us. Send us an email uh, at uh, workingclasscomedians at gmail.com mm -hmm. yes. if you have a limp or if you're a hump. <laughs> if someone dropped piss on you before a big meeting. Dude, if someone dropped piss on you, email us. <laughs> email like, us. dude, call Ed me. I need someone Text to feel me. <laughs> like he has a club. I need to connect with someone on this. <laughs> no one's trauma bomb. <laughs> I've never had anybody. I've never met anyone that's got fucking. Oh, so just me, guys? Okay. <laughs> Taxi driver P. He's <laughs> been around crackheads. He's been around <laughs> yeah. the lowest of the low. Still, no one he's ever met has had a bucket of piss dropped all over him. Oh my god, we'll see you guys again next week. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you gotta do is type in Working Class Holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on.